2023 was a great year for video games. If you are a Nintendo fan, from start to finish, this year was loaded with some of the best titles imaginable. From Zelda to Mario to re-releases of classic IPs to new games from IPs we haven't seen in forever. Like, this was a monumental year in gaming, right? And today, we are going to be counting down the top 10 games of 2023. Releasing hot on the heels of Bayonetta 3, Cerise and the Lost Demon was a very pleasant surprise from Platinum Games. A major return to form for them after over a decade of primarily putting out games targeted at adults. Cerise and the Lost Demon is a prequel to the Bayonetta series in which a young Cereza must venture out into the wilderness to uncover some some magic to accomplish her life goals. And along the way, she learns about valuable life, life lessons and makes lifelong friends. It is an amazing experience. Fantastic music, great visuals, a wonderful, wonderful story. The best in the franchise. The game really delivered in ways that I think the vast majority of people haven't really taken the time to appreciate and understand. This is a phenomenal title, and I wish, wish that more people would give it a shot. Pokemon Legends Arceus was my favorite game of 2022, so as a result, I had to leave Pokemon Scarlet and Violet off of my best of 2022 list. But because of the new DLC expansions, I have no qualms putting Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in the top 10 games of 2023. As much as I love Legends Arceus, it's really nice to go back to a more traditional Pokemon experience with the with the gym leader structure and uh, the Pokemon League at the end. But the game really does offer a wide range of innovations and changes that were unprecedented for the series, including a more open open world setting, you know, a relatively non-linear plot, the uh, multiple plots that occur concurrently, and like a really good climactic ending, like a true final boss that kind of gives the game a kind of a more of a JRPG kind of feel to it, similar to what Legends Arceus did. It is a breath of fresh air for the franchise in a lot of ways, while still maintaining what makes Pokemon endlessly appealing to, to fans and new players alike. I was really impressed with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and although it's not my favorite Pokemon generation of all time, it is certainly up there, and the DLC has really proven itself to be a really wonderful way to expand the series past its, uh, its traditional leanings. I was very impressed with Part 1, and I am eagerly, eagerly awaiting the release of Part 2. I loved VanillaWare's 13 Sentinels when it was ported on Nintendo Switch. So upon seeing that they were releasing an old game on the console, uh, Grim Grimoire, on PS2 for the Switch, I just had to check it out. And I was not – I was very, very pleasantly surprised with, with what the game offered. You know, great RTS gameplay – Gorgeous artwork and a relatively like relaxing, laid back atmosphere really made me keep playing this game until the very end. Now, it's quite a short game, especially for an RTS. Uh, it has no multiplayer features. It's only it's only about like 12 hours long. And I really find myself like concerned about the longevity of it. Right. Like, am I ever going to come back to this game ever? But like when I look back on it. When I think back on how much time I put to the game, like over a span of a couple of weeks, you know, how much I enjoyed playing it, like it really makes you realize just how, in spite of all of the game's flaws, like the things it excels at really, really make you keep coming back for more. It really does. All you really need in a great, in a great video game is just a stellar gameplay loop, right? You could argue that the reused backgrounds are annoying. You could argue that the game isn't all that well, that well balanced. You could argue the plot isn't all that great compared to 13 Sentinels. But at the end of the game, uh, at the end of the day, right, the game is just a monumental achievement. It is just so much fun to play. It is so much, it is so entertaining. I enjoyed it so much. And I really wish that more people heard about this one because. 
I found myself very, very pleasantly surprised with it. A remake of a couple of Game Boy Advance classics, Way Forward's Advance Wars really did a lot to bring the series back into the limelight. With a couple of quality of life improvements and some balance changes, Advance Wars was shockingly faithful to the original games while making a couple of necessary changes that I think make this the definitive version of the games available. Having both one and two packaged into one thing, considering how closely linked they are, you know, see, you know, having the having the online play rework, like this is all stuff that needed to happen, right? Uh, I I do miss the sprite based artwork. It is one of the things that I really wish they uh, they kept. Like at least give me the option to use the old school visuals. I would say, but all in all. Like the game, the games were fantastic strategy games now, then, and they've held up shockingly well now. If anything, you know, on my repeat playthroughs, I found myself like really appreciating the games more. Like these are amazing titles, and I hope that more people take the time to check them out. Out of nowhere, Nintendo decided to re release Pikmin 1 and 2 for Nintendo Switch, and upon some introspection and playing Pikmin 1 endlessly, I have decided that Pikmin 1 is, despite its age, one of the best games to release this year. It is endlessly replayable, right? It is this incredibly creative strategy game where you utilize these alien creatures called Pikmin to navigate the environment and collect ship parts so that you can return home to your to your planet. It is an incredibly creative title. With charming visuals, great, uh, serene, peaceful music, and a really distinct tone that really kind of portrays a world that's both beautiful and savage. It is, it is an incredibly unique title and one that I hope more people really discover with this release. It is by far the best Pikmin game released this year. One of 2023's most downplayed titles, Splatoon 3, comes roaring into 2023 with a bunch of new updates, new maps, and new features, right? This game is even higher on my list this year than it was last year because this is one of the games that I've spent the most time with. This is a game that you can come back to weeks, months, years later and have a completely unique, wild experience, right? Like, it is so incredible how this game remains relevant over such a long period of time something that i think a lot of uh, a lot of gamers aren't aware of is simply how you can't evaluate these games based on their day one state right people haven't wrapped their little minds around the fact that like these games get updated for years that you get new maps that you get balance patches that you get new modes next year we're getting a crazy new dlc which i'm sure is going to guarantee this game a spot on next year's list right like why exactly is splatoon 3 so slept on it is embarrassing and it is time we acknowledge this splatoon is the best online shooting franchise in the world it is outlasted overwatch it is outlast it is uh, more creative than call of duty it does more things with its mechanics and its world than fortnite it is a truly stellar top tier top five nintendo ip and Right now, we are in this delusional period where people don't want to admit how good this game actually is. Splatoon 3 is phenomenal. Go play it. Enjoy it. You will not be disappointed. One of this year's big surprises was that the Fire Emblem game that looked way too anime-esque for my liking, that looked way too child-friendly, actually turned out to be a pretty solid title. Like, a big thing regarding this game is that it's such a radical departure from Three Houses, which was wildly successful, that a lot of people were put off by it. But upon actually playing this game, I found, to my surprise, that from a pure gameplay perspective, this is one of the best Fire Emblem games ever. Like, it's so much fun customizing your units and, like, having them, building them, building them up to be the best they can be, and the maps are well-designed, the AI is great. Uh, they... It feels way more well paced than something like Three Houses, which was like really was had a problem with like pacing and and just the general story structure. Like Engage does have like a relatively simplistic plot of good guys versus bad guys, but after the extreme 
uh, gray on gray morality of three houses, this was actually a very refreshing change of pace because I like the stereotypical fire up a plot of like the evil country invading the the good country and you having to like go out on an adventure and just put a stop to it like i like that stuff and this game's homages the classic fe titles with like uh the the recycling of old characters is actually a really cool trend and i i think this is going to be the title that a lot of people younger players look back on as being their introduction to like the wider world of fire emblem Right. A lot of these characters haven't even appeared in games released in North America yet. And so I think a lot of uh, a lot of people are going to be introduced to Ike here, introduced to Soren here, introduced to like, you know, Hector here, you know, who are fan favorite characters among older players. But younger players wouldn't know anything about them like this game is way better than most people give it credit for. And I hope, hope that more people start acknowledging it as such. Growing up, I wasn't a big fan of Metroid Prime. Like, when I had first played this game, I had just beaten Super Metroid, which I would probably put on, like, my top tie, uh, top five games list ever, right? Like, I loved Super Metroid. And going back to Metroid, uh, playing Metroid Prime for the first time, it felt like a step back in a lot of ways, right? You missed the intense speed of Super. You missed the boss fights. You missed, like, the, the compelling story. You missed, like, the sprite work and, like, the 2D plane. Like, I just felt that I preferred Super. And years later, coming back to Metroid Prime, experiencing it again after I had played Super Metroid to death, like actually evaluating Metroid Prime on its own merits instead of comparing it to something else, I found that this truly is the best first-person adventure game ever made, bar none. Nothing else really comes close. Not Half-Life, not GoldenEye, no Call of Duty game, nothing, Bioshock, like nothing. Nothing even comes close to this. Like, I have been shocked at how much fun I've been having going through Talon 4 over and over and over again. The environments are top tier. The music is serene and amazing. Like, it's so much fun going back and forth between locations. Combat is stellar. Boss fights are amazing. This is one of the best games ever made. It comes as no surprise that The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is such a, has been such a success story. Right. Breath of the Wild is now known now as one of the best games ever made. I've seen it like top best games ever list. It's a it's a bestseller. It it really made uh, the Zelda franchise competitive in the in the eyes of the mass market again. Right. It was a revolutionary title that really redefined what an open world game could be. And following up on that was a really gargantuan momental task, something that I honestly thought Nintendo would struggle with. And they didn't. Like, they hit it out of the park with this one. Tears of the Kingdom is better than Breath of the Wild in a lot of ways. When it comes to, like, the dungeon design and, like, uh, the the enemy variety and just, like, a, a lot of things like that. Like, the boss fights. Like, it, it is better than Breath of the Wild, bar none. Like, the only problem I can see with Tears of the Kingdom is that, like, yeah, it does re re recycle assets. Yeah, it does have the same world. It does have a same similar structure to Breath of the Wild. But upon playing it, you really get this sense that the game is way, way different than the Breath, Breath of the Wild in basically every way. You do have a much more elaborate quest system. You do have a completely different combat system, like, with the, with the weapon fusing. You do have more more thorough, thorough side quests and like side adventures you do have like uh you know building mechanics you do have like more things you can do like w radically different powers you know completely different like physics like it's even run running on a different engine if you can believe that uh the game is i think very much better than I think people are giving it credit for. I know it, it's been critically acclaimed and stuff like that, but as it stands right now, this game is kind of uh, suffering from a Jura's Mass syndrome, where people don't want to admit the game is a masterpiece and like a really worthy follow-up of the of the previous game. They're they're trying to do this thing where they they're saying that like oh other games are better or that Breath of the Wild did more to innovate, but uh but really Tears of the Kingdom is in a league of its own. Like I would count go out and say this game is better than breath of the wild i would come out and say this is like one of the best games ever made i would say that nintendo really hit it out of the park like i feel like the people who are downplaying this game are really missing out on one of the best adventures ever made something that really sticks out in a sea of like boring triple a like ubisoft open world slop you know stuff like 
stuff like Elden Ring, stuff like Baldur's Gate 3, stuff like Armored Core 6, Street Fighter 6, like every other game of the year contender this year pales in contender uh, pales in comparison to Tears of the Kingdom. It's really not even close. And the sad thing is the uh, undeniable truth, like the thing that people nobody wants to admit is that Tears of the Kingdom isn't even the best Nintendo game to come out this year. That's right! Upon careful consideration, uh, replaying Mario Wonder, experiencing it, going for 100% completion, I have come away with the feeling that Mario Wonder is undeniably better than Tears of the Kingdom, with multiplayer features, with uh, all new mechanics, with innovations in the 2D platforming genre, which I think a lot of people have written off as being stale and outdated. Like, a lot of people went into this game thinking it was just going to be a rehash of things we've already seen before. Like, I remember when people were coming out saying this was, like, a minor release for Nintendo and that it wouldn't be a big deal and that nobody would care about it. And now... A month after release, it's uh, it's honestly one of my favorite Mario games of all time. It's one of my favorite Switch games, period. And it's honestly the best game of the year. Like, I think it's better than Tears of the Kingdom. I think this game really proves that 2D platformers are viable in the current market. Something that, like, the industry has been denial in denial about since the success of New Super Mario Bros. back in the day, right? Like, I think it is important to look at this game, look at its success, and really acknowledge that, like, what it's doing makes it the best game of the year. Like, 2D platformers aren't going anywhere. People love this stuff, and it is time we acknowledge that they absolutely can be considered the best games ever made.